what's going on? This is Brett Snodgrass, and I'm back with another episode of the Iron Deep Podcast. I got Gary Harps from Ohio on the show with me today. What's going on, Gary? Hey, not much. We're neighbors, I, I find out. That's great. That's right. Not too many neighbors I, I have on the show. I got a lot of East Coast, West Coast, but not too many Midwest guys. So, uh, so That's thanks, <laughs> thanks for th- thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm super excited about this particular episode. You have been a business, you know, leadership CEO for you know multiple decades now. You have a book that has came out called "Built to Beat Chaos." which I like just the title, I was like, oh, wow, I need to read this particular book. Uh, And I know a lot of business owners and leaders out there need to read as well. I mean, everyone really feels like they're in Mm -hmm. a chaotic world right now. We're going so fast, Mm -hmm. burning out, uh, no margin, busyness, family, business, money, financial relationships, and we're trying to spend that quiet time with the Lord and mm. we can't fit that in. <laughs> like that gets on the back burner sometimes. So I'm super excited to talk about, uh, you know, how do we beat chaos in our lives? But before we just dive into the book, um, some of the the highlights of that, let's just talk about you, man. So Gary Harps, uh, where are you from? Like, you know, and, and what's your world like uh, today? Yeah, sure. I, I grew up in a, a rural area, Finley, Ohio, which is, a community of about 40,000 people, but it's surrounded in farm country. And that's, I grew up in that farm setting and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was a good, good uh, way to grow up, learning to, to, to work hard on a farm. I was fortunate to get started in a a business with a couple of other believers at a fairly young age. Uh, I was 29 and we started a high tech company here in the cornfields of Ohio. And, um, the reason we started it was we felt like uh, one of my partners said that if you really want to grow in your faith, run a business. Mm. <laughs> and boy, <laughs> boy, was he right. And so uh, for really 40 years now, uh, we've been in partnership in multiple businesses. And But the most important part of the business is for me has just been how it keeps me on my knees and, and doing things that are bigger than I know how to do and makes me dependent on the Lord. So Mm -hmm. it's been a good, great journey. And, and actually in some ways the journey is accelerating. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So you've had multiple businesses, a lot of them tech, right? Cause I know you had a, yeah, they're all, there's a tech theme to all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. Um, Well, obviously now you're inspired to teach others and uh, from your own experience i love sitting at the the feet of other people that have walked the road before i have i have some experience but obviously you have a lot more experience than myself and a lot of our listeners as well um and a lot of us are just in the middle of this chaos and mm-hmm. uh, you you talk about this in your book beating chaos but let's just kind of define chaos can you just kind of take us into that what are you seeing in today's world uh right now especially for business leaders. Uh, and that, that actually was the point of the book is um, how do we think about chaos and are we thinking about it correctly? But in general, the sort of when we, I categorize chaos in three categories, the uh, things that we don't control, you know, in, in insurance policies, they'll have that term uh, acts of God, you know, the things, earthquakes, um, meteorites, uh, those sorts of things. So there's that category of chaos that's inflicted upon us <clears throat> and we really have no choice. There's then the chaos between us. I mean, we see wars, we see divorces, we see fights at work, just the the relational chaos. Mm-hmm. And then there is chaos within, which I think, I mean, a fair number of your, um, I, w- I was looking at one of your podcasts, I think a secret battle within, secret mm-hmm. battle within mm-hmm. is a, a great example of internal chaos. And that's misalignment with our identity and what we think we want and what we get. And, and in reality, all of these are things are, are interrelated. Our ability to respond to the external chaos has to do with the, our stability internally. So it's, it's a very um, interrelated topic. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So we talk about these things we don't control. Mm -hmm. Um, We talk about the relational chaos and and this internal chaos, which obviously you're speaking. I think you listened to our podcast and I just wrote a book called The Secret War Within. And and it talks about uh, this character as an allegor, 
allegorical book, uh, Christian fictional type of book, but it was about a character named Nolan Banks and deals with a lot of this internal mm -hmm. chaos. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we've kind of defined chaos and some of the things that that we work through. So again, let's just start peeling back the layers so we know, okay, we're aware. I mean, I wake up every single day and or week and I'm like, man, I have to do something, I, you know, or I'm going to keep going down this insane path of chaos. It's not slowing down. Um, you know, I've heard the term before. My wife has even said this before, like, we will do this when things settle down. And I'm always like, things don't, things don't settle down. <laughs> yeah. So we got to figure that out. So can you start to peel back the layers of, okay, we got a listener out there. He's like, yes, my life is busy. My life is chaos, chaotic. Um, what do I do? You know, where do I start? Yeah, the, I'm, you know, God makes us all different in, in sort of what our natural abilities are and, uh, the, and the experiences he gives us. And my particular um, worldview or mindset has been one of an engineer. I'm always trying to figure out how things work mm -hmm. and why things happen the way they do. And, and it's just just the way I am. It started at an early age. And, and so when I look at the behavior of human beings, um, I when I when before I became a Christian, I looked for answers. Of why do we do these things that are inconsistent? Why do I say I want this? And and do something else. And all these things lead to chaos, by the way. I mean, uh, they, there's just, it leads to internal, it leads to relational. And so if you go to scripture, um, you find out, I think the best answers for human architecture and why we do the things we do that do lead to chaos. And, uh, surprisingly in, uh, when you're reading anything, the beginnings of books are important and the endings of books are important. Of course, the story in between. Well, the beginning of Genesis has some insights that many of us have missed. I think I did in writing this book, clarified it for me. But, uh, you know, if you ask people in the a Genesis account, well, why did God create us and, and for what purpose? And, um, it, it says we're created to have dominion, which sounds the opposite of chaos, to be honest. Mm. Um, and it says we're creating God's image. And it says we're created meet male and female and have to multiply. So it, it gives us some hints. But there's a bigger hint that we miss, which is uh, when you ask somebody the first thing God created, uh, most people who remember their Sunday school will say, well, maybe it was a light or was it water or what, something like that. Well, if you read carefully, the first thing God created was chaos. Mm. Uh, it says, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth, and they were void and without form. They were in a chaotic state. And, and it's my premise as, a, as an engineer that God was revealing something to us. Later on, just a few verses later, he says, we're made to be like him in his image. Mm -hmm. And what he did was model for us what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take chaos and bring order out of it. Mm. And uh, so when you wake up with that realization and it really starts to penetrate, you begin to think of chaos differently. You begin to think it's not some oppressive thing. It is, in fact, our purpose. And uh, then it begs the question, well, I feel overwhelmed. What do I do about that? And the Bible speaks to that too. Well, let's take into that. So uh, it, it's very, very interesting because again, most people reading Genesis, the very beginning of the Bible, don't start to to think uh, through that. Uh, mm -hmm. So you talk about the purpose is chaos and to bring order to chaos. Um, yeah. So let's just kind of kind of go into that. So our our purpose is, you know, we we are overwhelmed. Uh, we don't know exactly what to do about it. Um, I don't have an engineer background and I don't have an engineer mind. I'm more of a, mm -hmm. of a visionary. So mm -hmm. I, I tend to go the direction was like, man, I want to, I want there to be order. Um, 
but my habits are to bring <laughs> more chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They fight against that. Don't they? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, you know, here's an example. <laughs> my wife and I's vision for our life is, you know, we want a, a sort of a simple life, uh, a simplification of life. Uh, but we have four children. I run a business. I do podcasts. I just <laughs> wrote a book. Um, so, you know, her, her, her idea is simplification is, well, let's not do a lot of these big things. Let's just, you know, focus on, um, God and family, which is awesome. And let's just really simplify and not do a lot of stuff. Um, but then I keep pouring on this other project or these other stuff. So again, my mind goes to, I don't want chaos, but my idea is I want to, to do these cool or not. I, I do. I want to do these purposeful, big, impactful sorts of things, um, mm -hmm. and I bring I bring overwhelm. Um, mm -hmm. So again, uh, can you take us into maybe your mind of of bringing order, right? So I, I definitely got raised my hand with the chaotic, uh, and, and you know I have that down. But how do I start to bring order and uh, take us into that? Well, there's there's two subtle principles or truths in scripture and it, it, again unpacking the the creation story he says something very interesting he he says well, you're created to have dominion and and defines dominion as sky earth water basically holistic dominion and then he says you have to multiply and therein the trouble starts because um the there's very little you can accomplish in your life by yourself. And so uh, the uh, bear with me, I, I have to talk sequentially, but truth is not sequential. It's three dimensional. And uh, the sequentially, the first thing to get straight is purpose. The only way you overcome chaos is with purpose. And um, until I, I like to use you're a visual person. I like to use a, a metaphor that, uh, Oh, many years ago, we built a house out in the woods and the, it was an empty field and that trucks arrived with all kinds of wood and stuff to build a house. And it looked chaotic. It was just piles and piles of stuff. And the only thing that brought order out of that piles of stuff was this guy standing there holding a blueprint. Mm. And in, until you have a blueprint, you have no clue what to do with all that piles of stuff. And so to think of the piles of stuff as the enemy is mistaken. The, mm -hmm. the piles of stuff is the raw material. For sure. And so when you when we label things as chaos, what we're really admitting is we don't know what to do with the material that's in front of us. Mm -hmm. And that's a purpose problem. Mm -hmm. it, it, okay, so that's, that's step one. Well, what you realize is like, and take the example with you and your wife, so often the reason we need other people is we aren't balanced. You have a strong desire to keep creating more and doing more. And she brings some balance to that, tempers it with some truth. And together you'll make better decisions than you would by yourself, either one of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, if she may, not, may be too reserved and not move far enough or fast enough, and you press the other way. And my the premise in the book is that this is the essence of leadership uh, and why it's holy. Leadership really means the first responsibility of leadership is determine purpose. If you can't determine purpose, you simply cannot, by definition, overcome chaos. The second challenge of leadership, which is we've human race has proven we're not we've never mastered it, is getting people to work together toward that purpose. Mm. So these are the two dimensions of leadership. And I, now, now you have to, I'm sorry, you have to step back to the bigger question. Well, why did God create us in the first place to have dominion? See, there, there's a bigger question here. Yeah, it's clear scripture says we were created to have dominion. We are designed to innovate, to be like what you are, to see a problem, want to solve it. It's wired into us. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at a a baby that's born, first thing, it wants to roll over. As soon as it rolls over, it wants to crawl. As soon as it crawls, it wants to walk, and then it wants to run. We are just built to mm -hmm. be overcomers. Mm -hmm. And we're very frustrated, 
and very um, angry and upset when we cannot do that. Well, I, in my opinion, God made this universe in such a way that we can't get what we want without working together. And we cannot work together unless we have God's spirit in us. We just simply are always in battle mm -hmm. with each other. And he's basically guaranteed that we want something we can't have unless we align ourselves with him. Mm -hmm. That's my premise of what the creation story is telling us. No, I love that. I love that. So um, we've talked about, yeah, aligning with his purpose, uh, his purpose for our lives to have dominion. We've talked about uh, a couple of the the two things to really start with is to have that blueprint, uh, to have that purpose in your life. Where is your destination? Uh, which direction are you heading? And to have that blueprint uh, to put to put it together. We've also talked about just working together. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what, that's what a leader does is to help his team, uh, work together or his family work together and, uh, anything else just, you know, how do we come up with, let me just start with, with purpose. Like we, you know, we have, um, the biblical to have dominion and, you know, a lot of the people are listening to this are leaders, um, but they struggle with this, this purpose, uh, this, this this philosophy of purpose. I mean, you think about the book, the purpose driven life. I mean, why that resonates with so many people is because, um, they just lack, they lack purpose and it's something that they can't quite get a hold of. Is there something that uh, maybe a tip or resource that, that they can start to look at, um, just to help, you know, and obviously, I, maybe I go with it into the business world is developing that purpose statement, that mission statement, uh, or a purpose statement for your life. Um, anything just to take us more into purpose um, when guys are probably listening to this saying, man, like, yeah, I know what the Bible says. I, I know that I am a leader and I have dominion, but I still can't get my my hands around this, hmm. this idea of purpose for my life, I guess. Yeah, a couple of things I would point out um the the gospel of jesus christ is different than all other religions basically says there's multiple levels of life you know there's there's breathing and um, being healthy and walking and and there are things we can do for each other loving on each other supporting each other caring for each other providing needs those kind of things but god basically the gospel says that that life is not what he intended for us or something mm -hmm. completely above it and it, it's uh, supernatural. Now, this sounds weird to people. I, I always joke with my Sunday school class. I said, we love science fiction, or I do, about aliens coming. Um, basically, the gospel is an alien invasion. Mm. <laughs> uh, the gospel says that there's Zoe life that comes into you when you're born again that comes from God. It's not, it, Zoe is a Greek word that basically means uncreated life. I mean, it means it always existed. And so what, one of the things I think people miss, and I'm a reader and a self-improvement guy and study engineering and all this kind of stuff, and that is necessary to have skills, but there is another dimension to life that is intersects with the, this realm. And Second Peter says that uh, in Christ, we have all things, all things we need for life and godliness. And so to your point about purpose, uh, you will have chaos in your life. Think, think about purpose as uh, um, Russian dolls, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the stacked dolls where you take them apart. There's what's inside of you, what you're built, what you love doing, that, that, that something in you that drives you to certain kind of work. Um, David Green and Hobby Lobby says he was born to be a merchandiser. He just loves thinking about buying and selling merchandise. Mm. and uh, when he's not doing that he's not happy mm. so there's that inner shell and that you say well that's my purpose well not really i mean it's one part of the purpose but you get married and then you have a purpose with you and your spouse what are you trying to do 
mm-hmm. together. And so you have to align your purpose with your spouse's purpose and together you form another purpose. Mm-hmm. Then you take a job with somebody and that job, they expect you to fulfill a role. And when you take pay from somebody, you are committing to align with their purpose. Mm-hmm. All, I'm, all I'm heading up to is society um, has proven that uh, at some point you ask, well, what do we align to? We align to the government. We align to world government. What's left? There's some level above ultimately. And if you don't believe in God, there's nothing to align with. Mm. And so, uh, so it seems like a long answer to your question, but you cannot get inner peace unless you get all these purposes lined up. And if you don't have a relationship with the father who created you, none of the other things know what to align with. And so you cannot get to this peace without the spirit of God guiding you. You cannot do it. Amen. Amen. Now I love that answer. And let's, let's tackle the, the, the second part of that because um, again, we're living in a world that uh, loves to, to battle each other relationally. Um, we see obviously, you know, you mentioned the government, there's a lot of chaos in, in the, in the government, a lot of, fights and, and a war going on there. Um, well, there's a lot of battles and wars within our own homes that, that none of us see, um, that, uh, you know, our own selfish desires, uh, pop up that I want this and my wife might want that. And then we battle each other. And then, uh, you know, the divorce rates are, are, are skyrocketing. There's uh, a lot of battles with our children. Um, as being a father that we talk on this show a lot about, uh, you know, one of the purpose of my life is to father, uh, four children. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then we lead and, and mentor our businesses. So we're trying to develop our teams to work together, but there's a lot of chaos and fighting relationally. Um, and it just seems like it's getting harder and harder to work together. Even within the church, uh, there's just a lot of, chaos and uh, people are quarreling, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You know what Paul talks about, uh, the church is is fighting and battling each other. Um, We we do it this way, you do it this way. Um, So what do you say to, to, again, to try to come together, to work together, because together we know that we can do more. Um, And uh, to, uh, to align together, to have this more purposeful life. And we can achieve a lot more if we can go together. So how do we do that? <laughs> well, I, I don't think, um, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't want to say it. I, there's only so far you can go unless you're led by God and his spirit in you. You know, the John chapter 15 and 14 about the vine and the branches. <clears throat> and let me just give you an example. Um, I had uh, the other day, we, we had a flood in our basement. Somebody left the water on that was working here and we ended up six inches. So we had to replace all the stuff in the carpet and all that. And I called the carpet to, or my wife called the carpet person and got a quote. And and then my wife told me, by the way, said, but they said, we have to move the furniture. And I said, well, we can't move the furniture. We need to find somebody who can. Mm. And the end end result of this story was I was getting kind of upset with, and I called them and I said, hey, we need somebody that does the furniture. He said, don't worry about it. Just have, talk to the guy who comes out there. So I'm waiting for this guy to come to do the measurement. And I'm ready to say, how are you going to do this? And he didn't know, he wasn't told that I had this question. And so when he didn't have an answer, I got upset with him. Mm. And um, I started chewing him out. And, um, and he says, why are you talking to me like this? And, and uh, I calmed down a little bit. And then I went back to my chair. I was having my quiet time, by the way, when he came. I was reading my Bible. <laughs> and uh, and I, I picked my Bible back up. And I'm trying to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit in my life. I mean, you talk about your book about the secret battle within. I think it's the greatest battle of all mm. is to shut down your flesh and listen to the spirit. Mm. And so I'm sitting there reading and it said, uh, you need to go apologize to that guy. I don't want to. And he says, no, you need to apologize. And then I hear him coming upstairs, talking to my wife, uh, giving her the quote. And I go out and my version of apologizing was I stand next to my wife and just look at him and smile. (laughs) So there, God, I apologize. (laughs) <laughs> and I go back into my office after he leaves 
sat down and he says, you didn't apologize. And I go, uh, and, uh, <laughs> so I walk out of my office has a side door to that I can get to the driveway. The guy hadn't left. And I went to the, his window and I said, look, I'm a Christ follower. I didn't treat you right. I don't want to live like that. And he, he and I, and he apologized to me yeah. and our relationship became stronger. Mm. Amen. Now, what, what I'd submit to you is you, you said it, we, we break down in the church. We break down in marriages Frankly, the behavior among believers does not appear to be that different than non-believers. Mm -hmm. And I would tell you, I'm 70 years old, and um, I'm just learning to say that my life is not going to get better unless I listen to the spirit inside of me. Because everything else I do is natural. And like this guy, my, it's natural anger, justifiable. They're not doing what I want. I'm the customer. But it's still not of God. Mm -hmm. and i would submit when we are acting like that with each other uh we're not yielding to the holy spirit mm. amen i love that awesome well so many great things we could really dig uh, a lot deeper into this book built to be chaos uh it's a it's a great book i want to make sure our listening audience has access to that book that we're going to talk about at the end of this show here but one final question is i know that you have talked about your faith integrating your faith into your work uh many people think that if they want to really live out their faith, they need to vocationally be a pastor, be a missionary, you know, go into that. Uh, you talked about, you know, if you want to grow your faith the most, be a business owner. That was some of the advice that you had gotten. Um, and you also talk about using your business as a platform to minister mm -hmm. to other people. Can you talk to us about that, about, um, you know, uh, that being a business owner can possibly impact more people for the kingdom than, than a pastor, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm awakening to this at a late age. What you just said, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm 70s, and I, I have spent my life in technology helping people, but God has tapped me on the shoulder to say exactly, to do exactly what you said. We're now starting a business to come alongside Christian business owners to do exactly what you said, to show them that you can, in fact, run a great business. God wants high quality and excellence and do it in a way that exposes people to the kingdom, uh, doesn't ram it down their throat, but loves on them to the point that they want to know more. And, you know, there's 160 million people going to work every day. There's not 160 million people going to church every day. Mm -hmm. And true. there's 80 million people going to schools. These are, these are where we need to have impact in mm -hmm. schools and in businesses. And uh, I'm not saying we're churches. I'm not saying that we need the church. But um, so uh, it's, it's become my calling. I thought I'd be slowing down. But I, I really think that's what God's telling me to step up to do mm -hmm. and uh, is help people do what you just said. Amen. Well, thanks, Gary, for being on the podcast today. I appreciate you. Uh, best place to get the book is it uh, Amazon? Uh, what are some of the yeah? Ways it, they can get the book? In, it was published by Wiley, and it's uh, available all the major book outlets on our website. But Amazon's easy. Awesome, sounds good. Make sure you guys get that "Built to Beat Chaos" by Gary Harpst. Thank you for being on the show today, Gary. Wish you the best, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Brett. 